Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Glad to have everyone here, all of our guests. We welcome you, and we're looking for a very exciting, very busy day. So this one will be fun. So um, if you would get a copy of your bulletin, let me go over a couple of the announcements and add a couple of things to it. You'll first note that your joy gift offering, we are taking that offering up today. We'll be taking it up tonight also. Um, and I'm not sure about next Sunday, but anyway, if you, can, if you want to participate with that, you can do it today or tonight for sure. Um, there is an envelope. If you did not get an envelope and would like one, just grab me and I'll find one. I think I've got a couple left at the back, and so we'll find an envelope for that. Um, we do need to um, remind everyone that we do have our Christmas card bags ministry in the back of the church in the fellowship hall. And also our cram a crib ministry is set up back there with a great big um, crib. And so it makes sense for that. Christmas Eve service tonight at 5, and you'll see the note on contributions for the church um, from Roxanne. And then also the note on circle number 1. We will be on our prayer list. We have a couple of names to add um, to that. We would like to add the family of Miss Hilda Stone, who we had on our prayer list. Um, that was Jeffrey's mother-in-law, Jeffrey Cox's mother-in-law, and so um, she has passed this past week. We're adding Lynn Simmons. Lynn is the manager at the um, White Bull Body Shop. Lynn has got cancer and is getting ready to undergo some treatments for that. We're also going to add Morgan Pierce. Morgan's a young woman from over at Sarah Gorda. We've been with her, friends with her family for a long time now. And so she has um, breast cancer and she's getting ready to go through some pretty quick treatments. And so we want to be thinking of her. We also are going to add uh, Lottie Hall and Courtney Butler. That's part of Mr. Bill Stoller. That's Mr. Bill's family and friends on there. And so we're adding them onto our prayer list. But our other names have been put on here for a reason, so if you would include them all in your prayers. And we will continue and let us, let us worship.
Adam and Eve disobey God's command and disrupt the order and goodness of creation. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard you. I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to me to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you that you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, 
for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Here ends the lesson. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this, you have and not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Here ends the lesson.
people who walk in darkness receive the promise of the Messiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the lesson. The Messiah will come from the root of Jesse to restore the peace of creation. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with his, the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf <laughs> shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. The young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here ends the lesson.
An angel appears to Mary and announces that she will bear a holy child. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the lesson. Joseph and Mary travel to Bethlehem, where Mary gives birth to her child. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Here ends the lesson.
angels appeared to the shepherds in the fields and announced the birth of the Messiah. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. Here ends the lesson. Magi from the east come seeking the Messiah and offer gifts to the baby Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay an homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Here ends the lesson.
The word of God becomes flesh and lives among us, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things come into beginning through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to enlighten everyone, and everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, and who gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God, and the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends the lesson. Let us pray. Eternal God incarnate in Jesus Christ, with the angels we sing and glorify your name, thankful for all that you have given to us. Today we are especially grateful for the gift of your Son who gave up his heavenly home for a manger and a cross so that we might experience redemption a gift that neither spoils nor fades. With the angels, we also desire peace on earth, a peace that is broader and deeper than the end of war. We pray for the restoration of this world, for the growth of your kingdom, for reconciliation, healing, and renewal. Make your incarnate presence known in each and every situation that we bring to you even in these moments. And may we as your servants be vessels of your hope, peace, joy, and love. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, even as we join our voices together in the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. And find us the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. The ushers will wait upon you for the morning offering. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and we dedicate these earthly things to your use, that they and all the world might shine with your light. We celebrate the gift of life abundant in your most holy name. Amen.
A word of appreciation to Randy and our musicians for the glorious music today, and a word of thanks to our readers and to all of you for filling the Lord's house with glorious sounds of praise. Now may you go in peace, and the sun of righteousness shine upon you, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.